Well, uh, here we are with Glenna Avila, one of our greatest muralists. Uh, she had created many murals throughout Greater LA, and uh, she's uh, known for uh, her great mural at the 101 Freeway, the LA Freeway Kids. So, uh, hi Glenna, how are hi. you? Uh, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and about uh, whether you are from LA or? Yep, I grew up here in LA, I was born and raised here. Um, and ever since I can remember, I love art. And when I was in graduate school, I was going through this whole kind of a turmoil about how an artist can live in this world and why you create art and who is it for and all these questions about why, you know, where does the art end up after you create it. And then I, I met this wonderful um, friend in, in college, in graduate school. What um, school was that? This was the University of New Mexico. Ah, and uh, right. her name was Angelica Acevedo. And what she was doing was she actually had a, a job painting murals and teaching kids how to paint murals at a local elementary school in Albuquerque. And one day I tagged along with her and I saw what she was doing at the school and it answered, it, like a light bulb went off. It answered all my questions about what is the purpose of art, why do we, why as artists do we want to engage in it, um, where does the art end up, you know, is it a commodity, do, do only wealthy people have access to it, uh, and here were these kids in this downtown, rundown school in, in downtown Albuquerque, learning how to paint and, and beautifying their school and doing these remarkable murals on the walls of the school. And it just, for me, it was just a, a, a light bulb went off. And, and it, it was like, that's what I want to do. So when I came back to LA after being in New Mexico for a year, I came back and, um, and applied for a job as an art instructor with Judy Baca. So we were so we were working for the city. It was um, the Recreation and Parks Department at the time, and I had been there uh, a few months, and then Spark was created, and so Judy shifted over to Spark, and and there I was left with, okay, we're doing, you know, 30 murals a year, oh, wow. two in each council, city council district, and we had a whole we had a whole plan. We had a whole um, chart of locations and artists and we just um, Those were continued the wonderful the work. times when muralists didn't have to deal with the mural ordinance and that's right. the issues that we have today, right? That's right. Um, basically, we, uh, if you got permission from the building owner or if it was a government building, you had permission from the, the agency that owned the building. And then we were able to hire youth from that neighborhood organize meetings, talk to the community about what kind of images they wanted, and make it so that the murals were reflective of the different neighborhoods that we're in. So you can very legitimately say that you were one of the muralists that helped to make this city the, capital, the mural capital of the world. Because it was continuing you were painting at the time, there were so many murals being painted that you, know, you all helped yeah. to do that. Yeah, it was it was continuing the work that that Judy had envisioned and set up, and um, it was a chance to get to know all of the artists and work closely with them, design and imagine projects together, working with a variety of communities, which I love. So, one of the first projects I got to do was with John Valadez, and this was he was he was very young in his career, and he showed up and. Um, we became great friends and we did quite a few different projects together. Uh, one summer we had John Valadez and Carlos Amaras working with high school students in Highland Park. And I mean, I I'll never forget that summer. It was like an amazing experience. Yeah. We had about, I think about 24 uh, high school students and John and Carlos would have these very animated um, discussion slash arguments in the middle of Figueroa, all about art, and and it was it was just a 
it was a great experience. You know, painting as part of the Olympic Arts Festival, that was a huge, uh, huge honor and, and really an exciting time because the Olympics were coming to LA and we were selected, there were 10 artists selected to, to paint murals on the freeway. So that was great and the amount of attention that those uh, murals got and with not only local press Worldwide. but international. Worldwide. Uh, yes. We had interviews, uh, I remember an interview on the freeway with a, with a Japanese film crew and then there was a German film crew and, and then there were just, you know, and then people were just, uh, uh, you know, walking down the freeway. I remember some people were walking and I'm like, don't do that, yeah. you know, you, you shouldn't be on here. And then I remember painting uh, on the three stories of scaffolding on that mural and and there was this guy up at the top and he was like trying to signal me and and you know so many people are trying to talk to you and it's right. you can't really hear anything and, but he ended up writing a letter tying it to a rock on a string and then lowering it down to wow. me on the scaffolding and um and so then I was asking for a date <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh. and he wanted to know if I would come and paint a mural on the Cecil Hotel, which is like this, I don't know, 15-story yeah. hotel, huge right. walls, yeah. too. It's just beautiful, mm -hmm. you know, it was a great celebration, and we're so in need of that again, and certainly we're looking forward to, to the 2014 30-year anniversary of the Olympic yeah. uh, Freeway Mural, so, you know, it'd be it's great amazing. to have them all back. Yes. I can't believe it's been 30 yeah. years, it they just seems like yesterday. We're all kids. That's yeah. right. Yes, absolutely. Yes, we still are. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> In Inside. our art, exactly. <laughs> and, and so when you're not doing your art and when you're not painting, uh, what uh, what are you what 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 where you find yourself doing? Well, you know, um, my my major full overly full time job is director of the CalArts Community Arts Partnership, and that's a program where we. We give tuition-free arts training to K through 12 students throughout LA County. So we have 55 different programs in 60 neighborhoods throughout LA. I get a lot of pleasure out of being a, a catalyst for young artists. If I had to pick a favorite, and it's not because the artwork is the best, but it, because the process was so interesting, is I got to do two murals in um, a probation camp with incarcerated boys and um, this was a, a Camp Rocky in San Dimas mm -hmm. and you know working with with those uh, boys and getting them to express themselves they had the best ideas they had the most forward-thinking way of visualizing what they wanted to put on the wall I was just amazed by what they, what they did we um, we didn't have very much source material because they're in a they're incarcerated and we were we started the process in a classroom and so the only books I brought in books on murals but the only books that were there were like American history books so they were looking at Mount Rushmore and looking at the different presidents that were carved in Mount Rushmore and they were saying how wh how why don't we do a mural but instead of these presidents we pick our heroes. And so they picked Martin Luther King, Cesar Chavez, Malcolm X, and you know, really important figures to them. And so we changed Mount Rushmore. Another mural that I did was at um, the Phoenix Phoenix House. It's a it's a school and, and residential facility for young people who have uh, drug and alcohol problems. And so I was there for a period of, you know, some months, mm -hmm. and we painted the whole entire courtyard area, which was huge, it's this huge courtyard, and the walls were 15 to 20 feet high, and we covered every single one of the four walls with, uh, uh, they wanted to do like an underwater oceanography, mm -hmm. um, and, and it became this whole environment because it was, once you're in the middle of it, you're surrounded by this yeah. whales and fish and different things, and that was a really fun. And and then I find it also very therapeutic for the students. Absolutely. We would have, um, you know, hours and hours of just being out there painting, and painting can be very um, exhausting, but relaxing <laughs> too, and and also 
inspiring and energizing and and it can be a very it can be a group activity or it can be a group that has you know very solitary elements to it where you're engulfed in your own pain and one last question that I have for you is about you know how uh, themes that repeat themselves in your murals or your artwork or uh, given that your background as you said that you were more contemporary and looking towards the future. Are your themes more related to that? But I think if you found a theme, it would be about young people That's wonderful. finding their yeah, voice. The future. We should focus yeah, on that. That's right. Especially as you know, as it got as as it was more and more difficult to find good arts training in the public schools, and you know, you find there still there still are great art teachers and great music programs, but it seems like we're always under attack and so yeah, and it becomes right. fewer and fewer and that's why programs like the one we're doing, um, the CAP program is so important because we can get kids after school in the summers and then we do have programs in school as well. So wonderful. Well, yeah. Thank you so much. This is great. Oh, you're Thanks welcome.